Ladies and gentlemen, I've known this woman a long time, seen her come a long way. Give it up for Lil Mo on Ebro in the morning. Uh, you with Stiles. the dress, clap. Because if you ain't clapping, you Yo, won't. clap. Boss she talk to you. Thank you, thank you. Let now, I'm going to warn amen. everybody. If you, if you don't watch Lil Mo on TV, I know people now talking about Lil Mo got a whole anger management thing she's dealing with or something on the television. Yeah. That is the Lil Mo that I've known for 15 years. And I'm not even really mad. That's why. That's I, what I don't want. Why is it? Just because you turn up on people and are honest, why do they? Yeah, and it's a buildup. It's not like, oh. Like how in Philly, I, we was just talking the way here. Like in Philly, if you look at somebody, what the fuck, what the fuck are you looking at? Yeah, I'm not like that. It's just like okay, I'm I'm trying to analyze what are they looking at. Maybe they don't, you know, realize that it's really me because I've had a lot of people. You look like Lil Mo, but um, she just ratchet all the time. I'm like, okay, so that's what they think. So mm. you know, sometimes living up to that persona or always being upset. I'm just like, I'm not one of the angry black women. I've never seen you syndrome. as an upset person. But people, I've never seen you. I mean, obviously, I've seen you get mad at yeah. things, but I've never known you to be like angry or bitter. Ever. You always laugh. You yeah. always cracking jokes. Yeah. So, I, I'm always on joke time, and a lot of people they just can't handle my humor, and yeah, I'm cool a, with that. Yeah, that's that's something that can be sensitive sometimes. Some people this can't one. handle the sarcasm. The sarcasm. Yeah. I'm very sarcastic, you know? very opinionated. Um, it's just a lot of things that I am. But a hater or mad is something that I am not. I don't claim it. That's like a trait. People like. Pe there are people I see, they wake up mad. Uh, I woke up, I didn't even get no sleep. So I'm just like, that's the only thing. I was just be like, yo, if I was at home, I would be getting my children ready for school. So that's the only thing. I'd be like, yo, I really don't be getting no sleep. That's I'm mad at my sleep pattern. Well, who's calling anything. you a hater? I don't know. People thumb thug. No theatric uh, theater. The people that be sitting there, <laughs> thumb thug be, theatric theater, because they be so dramatic. <laughs> it's like people wake up and with all of this social media giving people a platform right. where they screenshot. Oh, they just went off on them. They read them. That doesn't equate to you saying that to me in real life. Because in real life, like I grew up snapping on niggas. Like yeah. that's me. Like I come from around that era where it's like yo, your moms be your moms like that. <laughs> you know. So it's like you. It's really too not too many jokes that could be said about me that I. Have haven't heard said about myself or that will offend me mm. are you I, I hear on the show that you kind of have a conflict this was, was the r&b divas r&b divas la right you yeah. have a conflict kind of brewing with every single person on no, the show is that's, that a lie. that's a lie that's a lie that's a lie is that who it is well all right this season second season is no longer the um dawn or kelly so this season we added two new additions to the cast so um the returning members for second season because it's over now That's like right. last week was the um final mm -hmm. week myself um shante moore claudette ortiz fi uh, formerly of city yeah. high mm -hmm. and michelle a. um the two new cast members are leela james and chrisette michelle mm -hmm. so the only person that i had a on beef camera with would that would be and it wasn't even no beef because you already know when you're mm -hmm. from the east coast beef is it's when i see you guarantee right, right, right. yeah i mean so it was just like the <laughs> On camera beef that was 10 weeks of 10 weeks of what you guys get to see but basically 12 weeks of filming was between myself and Shantae Moore because I'm a person I respect all my elders that's the way I was raised both of my Damn. parents they've been to Mer they've been together Did for like a hundred years you just call Shantae Moore your elder though? well she's older than me anybody <laughs> even if you were born 10 minutes before me you're you're the eldest one but she's the eldest of the whole cast and the way she came in and I was shade. I was trying you know to that <laughs> you know that shade. but a, a lot of people mistake my honesty for shade I could be shady oh I'm a shady queen but at the end of the day <laughs> when it's the reality of it all and you know you don't want to have, ever have your integrity questioned mm -hmm. I'm just like I would never so what started just, it how did it because she did, was faking faking what the folk her life with the one of the producers left a book they notes book at my house and I was like oh somebody left a Okay, so that's what her story is this season. And what she what she told them and what she gave was two separate things. The tears, the ambulance scene, the everything mm. that was her story is just like, okay, so you came here to be an actress. And I'm cool with that. But just let me know what angle you're coming from because I'm coming back in off of, shoot, a lot. I was going through a divorce um, oh, yes, right. earlier that year. I had to have a medically induced abortion it was just like so many things that was yeah. going on and i was emotionally a wreck mm -hmm. so when you come in i i noticed that i took up for her last season so when when i come in and you acting different all right do you if you want to be a fake bride then you be that but don't do that with me we were better than that i lost the she like, you didn't lose no friend over me yes i did kelly price and i were friends we had a chance to amicably you know to make it right mm. but i took up for her a lot on season one and i was just like i'm not doing that no more Mm. I'm and, over and it. And it was it. 
Yeah, because you know, she's never had me. to go to battle for me. And a lot of stuff that happens off camera, oh, my God, I wish there was like a secret candy camera that you could just see half the stuff. People now, yeah, do. you kept saying uh, Shantae's the only person on camera you had beef with. But yeah. you kept saying on camera, on camera. Because as if that's there was the... She was she was basically beefing with everybody. She got mad because Chrisette and Leela were the newbies, and they were basically upstaging her because the story that they told to the producers before they got there, they actually over-delivered. A lot of people didn't expect, especially from Chrisette. They was just like, you know, everybody thinks of Chrisette. Like, she just be chilling. She says she's the flower child. But she would get there. She was like, oh, no, I don't. Chrisette don't sing backgrounds. I was like, yeah, no, and me, I'd be like, read that. Me from the, I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't have time, to, yeah. yo, she really, but she doesn't mean any harm, but it's just like. When it comes to her craft, Chrisette is very she's protective very, she and protective. upfront. Like, she protects yo, her brand. I'm not a side bitch at all. Exactly. I'm not a background bitch at and, all. And she let it be known. And Leela coming in, you know, she's a soul singer. She started out singing like background for everybody, but she came in, she was just like, yo, I'm using this platform to push everything that I have going on because it's a lot of, consider underground artists that really have a different demographic than you know normally like a Chrisette or myself we all have different backgrounds so yeah. we all mm -hmm. supposed to show how we make it blend and make it work but some people like I'll tell you this Shantae like came in thinking like she was Mariah Carey and I'm just like yo B like we basically one step besides Chrisette said she the only one that got songs on the radio let's be real yeah. you know what I'm saying and I I do radio and I was like I ain't got no songs on the list right. so all this crap I'm talking I gotta step up to the plate but I'm like ma'am you ain't even gotta act like that you don't have to be in a separate dressing room from us nobody's going to mess with you nobody cares <laughs> like that's when I get yeah. in my bag and yeah. then I'll be like yo like for real when people oh coming through entourage they don't want nobody being here you should have got dressed at the house then. You doing the most <laughs> with the least. Wow. So R and B Divas LA, your second season. Lil yep. Mo's here, everybody. Um hey. is this a lucrative thing for you? Has this helped the Little Mo brand? Because I'll tell you, I mean, you're a songwriter. Yeah. In your own regard. You, you know, do vocal arranging behind the scenes and help yeah. R and B chicks who can sing cute sound amazing like i've seen you do that work yeah. uh you could also you've also been on the radio you've had your own shows on yeah. radio before so there's a lot of things that you can do um just with your own personality and your talent but yeah. r&b divas la you decided to do that because that was going to further your brand it has was, it been successful for you heck yeah like the doors that it opens you always use everything as a platform anytime opportunity knocks it knocks and it doesn't come again so a lot of people going into it oh you shouldn't do that because that's one step above being on on unsung i said so bitch that mean i'm on tv Hello, yeah. I know I know who owns the network. I know who the advertisers are. I know certain things. I do my research and I have mm. a great lawyer who's just like, yo, and a great team now that know what a good look is supposed to look like, you know. Mm. And sometimes you got to start from humble beginnings, then branch off to bigger things. But this platform has opened me up not only to be a vocal producer and get music back out there, but now I'm an author. See, I got my first book, Tame a Little Mo to Tame Tell All. Tame a Little Mo. Yeah, I, I told it all. And it's about my life, so I'm not spilling everybody's tea. Because okay. I spilled people. I, I changed the <laughs> names of certain individuals to protect ah, the innocent. It's you know? shockingly revealing. Yeah, and it answers a lot of questions about a lot of people wanted to know, how did you meet Fabulous? Like, right. mm. how did you meet Fab? What happened between you and Ja? Like, are y'all still cool? Yeah, I know y'all fell apart. Um, how I got to going or how I left beauty school. I was at um Long Island Beauty Academy mm -hmm. and got a call like you want to go on a roll with Missy Elliott. So I'm a beauty school dropout. Yeah. Um, just so many things. Um, from things when I was assaulted in um, what was it? San Francisco a lot of people thought somebody was throwing bottles in the club no someone actually walked up to me and split my shit to the white yeah, meat yeah I remember that was yeah crazy. and it broke my heel but it was just like the the incident like leading up to that incident would actually happen that day how I just felt something was something was going to happen I couldn't put my finger on it so when it actually happened it was just like like I'm about to so get the book my is bag because it's, it's like, all about you yeah it's about me so do we talk about R&B um, yeah I talk about like how we fell apart how I was in Walmart and Foxy Brown the rapper called me and was just like yo you being a woman of God you need to um, make amends with your sister um, Kelly Price and so I got to say you know I know things got a little crazy and so we got to you know bury that hatchet are we the best of friends now no that doesn't happen but it's just like yo I want you to know I don't hate you I don't have I understand the re the stance that you took and you got to understand mine I have when I did first season I had four children I, I have seven collectively with my um husband so like he has three I have four so we do y'all married like, now 
Yeah. Y'all one got married? I thought y'all were still boyfriend and girlfriend. No, the, you know, I don't waste young, no time. The, <laughs> this is the young man that boxes. Yeah, he boxes 17 and Championship, right? Yeah. You headed for that belt? World title, Now, I, you know, I, I was watching you uh, for on, on your Instagram page because yeah, you're going to all Mo his show. fights. Yeah. Right? So yeah. it was one fight. I was like, yeah, I mean, maybe she likes boxing. Then I was like, wait, who's the boxer? Yeah. Then I was like, wait. that's a Then I saw you in the ring and he won some fight. You jumped in the ring and fell I out. I had an anxiety attack. About what? Okay. Now I'm so glad I get to tell my story. You sit your, he, to, he told me in the ring. He's like, go sit your ass down. <laughs> <laughs> he kicked you out. Yes. Get out of here. I got fired that day. He fired me because I was just like, yo, I love boxing. And so I was like, let me be your personal assistant. <laughs> so when he goes away to camp, like when people don't know, that's why I'm just like, shout out to anybody who is married to dating or potentially going to be with a boxer when they cut weight because he fights at 134 mm. so when they cut weight and sleep deprivation and food deprivation and all that stuff it messes with your hormones so not only can you not have sex mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying because that is not a game but like everything aggravates him so he calls me like at 10 a.m. right before the fight the day of the fight he was like hey you got my cup I was like huh he was like yeah my hip guard and so i could fight because i can't fight without it remember i tell you that i was like oh my god we were all the way in what part of connecticut mashatucket connecticut seven hours away from home and you didn't have the cup he didn't have a cup so i had to go to dick's pause <laughs> <laughs> and go get a regular cup but he didn't have a hip guard he was like in all my years of boxing i ain't never he was like the fuck he was like you know what you're fired i was like this is right before this fight so i'm sitting there i'm shaking i'm just like no we're gonna make this work so i'm thinking like yo he said 16 and oh if this cup is gonna cost him a fight this is my fault i'm in my bag at this point i'm just like all right i gotta calm down let me pop a perk i'm just gonna be real oh so i can calm God. lay freck down let me drink a beer <laughs> so i'm sitting there and so he gets the first round second round third round go and the third round the dude caught him and see people don't know why he's fighting him and his brother are having conversations it's like so crazy to be there his brother's like yeah so you know what you gotta do he's like all right i got you so they're talking the whole time yeah. and i'm like yo dude y'all don't get to see it but to be there you can feel the energy mm -hmm. so the boy caught him and he like slipped his brother's like all right that was a good one. he's like yeah he got that shit off and i'm just like oh my god it's because i forgot the cup <laughs> by the fifth round by the fifth round like his trainer um brother nazim richards who trains richardson who trains like everybody yeah. bernard sugar shane like yeah, i know him, him. From bernard sugar shane. like yeah. he was just like he just says something to him he's like go get him like and once he says that it in my head i hear and i hear that and i feel that and his eyes change and he sticks out his he doesn't realize but he goes he just turns into wreck, like just the the man. And yo, he caught the dude with an uppercut and it was such a delay where actually hit the dude. The dude's arm went out like hee hee and the dude fell. So I was like, yes, I got turned. I jumped out of my chair no. and I'm jumping up and down and I'm turning. I'm like, that's how you win a motherfucking fight. David and Goliath, hello, Akbar. I'm just screaming out all of this stuff. I'm Allah getting turned. Akbar. I'm just screaming out because he's Muslim. <laughs> yeah, so I'm nah. just like, and just whoever just do this. So the ball got up after like eight seconds. So I'm like, yo, he still got that eye. <laughs> He caught the ball at the temple and that was it. The boy get up like the way that they ran in the ring and I'm shaking. I'm just like, he won. Like I could not calm down. I was just like, do anybody know CPR? I'm dying. They like, oh, she I'm like, no, bitch, I'm dying. I'm having, I can feel my, I can hear and feel my heart beating out of my chest. All right, all right, all right yeah. listen, Mo, you cannot oh go to any more God. fights. That's what he said. No, you got to stand on. Damn you, say, you can't, you can't. You it's can't, too much. You're you gonna, can't you be that. That's what they so said. the man is trying to. This is his career. You can't be a distraction like that. I didn't distract. He doesn't even pay attention to me. Yeah, but now fighting. that he knows that that happened and he loves you. This but, is your. Let me finish. Go ahead. This is your husband, and uh -huh. I'm speaking for him. He loves you. Now, if he knows that you out in the in the uh, uh, crowd, yeah, going through all these emotions. Well, but nobody how is knew. he supposed to? No, it, listen, it happened, right? And he yeah. knows it happened. Mm -hmm. How is he supposed to concentrate on his fight, knowing that you are in the crowd acting like this? How was he? How because when What'd I you get say? What'd you say? Oh, really, that's on her. If once I'm in the side of the ring, everything he, outside the ring don't exist. No, he, I understand you saying no, that. No, but the but whole thing is just because. Real, like, if she would have gotten a fight. With somebody outside the ring while I'm fighting, I'm going to continue my fight. I'm not going to worry about yeah, it. Yeah, he's a different... Yeah, but what if she needs CPR? They, they have, they have doctors fight. there. What it is is because but I knew still. what we went through before we got to the fight. That's why I was so turned. Why don't you come get in the mic? Uh, you can say, say you come to the mic. Y'all got to understand. Every time a fighter gets to the ring, they put their life on the line. Yeah. I ain't got time to turn my, way, my face away from my opponent. My life is on the line when I get in the ring. Yeah. You feel me? So I've known people that died in the ring. I know people who killed people in the ring. So once you inside that square circle, 
Everything outside that ring is, is out. Is, is, is yeah, is out. That's why. But between, would you prefer that's her? In, that's why in between rounds, your trainer gets in the ring. You don't listen to nothing outside the right. ring. Right. But nothing would you prefer is. her to stay at home? She can do what you want. I'm his number one fan. <laughs> like, I'm his number one fan. She can do what she wants. And ain't nobody gonna out fan me because you know what it is? Nobody's mo. Nobody's <laughs> trying to out They do. They you not. trust me. They but, do. But I think that we're, they more do. Con- we're more concerned about your health. Oh, no, I'm gonna be good. Well, no, you, you know what it down, is? It, because I let because I thought my mistake, my oversight would have cost him the fight, and it didn't. So the fact that just to be there, just to know that, like, yo, he still won in spite of not having a cup, and he got hit in the hip, which can he could have had. You know, it could have mm-hmm. really messed him up, and I was just like, yo, like, so I know that I'll have to fall back being his when he trains, or like I can't be around. Lil Mo, ladies and gentlemen, oh, yeah. she's here. She's got a book. <laughs> this is a lot to deal with. I got with. an album, everything. You, where's y'all? What's y'all? October 27th, The Scarlet Letter. Everybody read the book when they was in high school. Yeah, you know, right? yeah. So it's just like, basically, I've been through a lot. And a lot of you people. You wrote on this side. It's all you writing, everything. Me and, um, I, I recorded the whole album in L.A. while we were filming season two of okay. Army Divas L.A. So um, I use a lot of West Coast cats. Um, The guy who wrote, she ain't bad, no. What's the, uh, Chris Brown and, um. Sean Kingston song. Oh. His name is Constantine. Okay, he um co-wrote the whole album with me. Like oh, we dope. really went in there and got in our bag. Like the f- the essence of Little Mo from Based on the True Story when I had the braids. That's right, the hard that's beats back, and all yeah, of that. Okay, really took it back to that. So, Do we yeah. have a copy of the album? Somebody bring us one. I was about to say I don't even have a copy of the album. I got the single called "Should Have Never Let You Go." All right, make sure you leave that with us so we can get that, that for the too. people. Yep. All right, the book "Taming Little Mo" the that's album. Uh, what else you working on right now? You got that yeah. BET movie? Yeah, it, it's called "Who Can I Run To." That mm-hmm. comes out October 18th, and Damn. I'm leaving. Um, in a couple of days to go back to shoot we start season three like and you're on season three r&b divas yeah we start filming we're gonna air in january so uh i'm proud of you kid thank you i have to keep working too many children and the family you that everybody's good everybody the kids is good yep and my tubes ain't tied so we're looking to you having more babies yeah really so so you're seven right now yeah four well you got three she said right (laughs) and you got four yeah so y'all are set and all these babies in the same house well not all of them because we're bicoastal, so we're only taking one with us to L.A. He's Got two. It. The rest are in school, but okay. they be... Certain. So your mom is still heavily involved, too, right? Grandma, aunties, because yeah. you got a whole network of support and, and his family, and too. Like, we have help. Thank God for that. I never had that before. Like, wow. it was just my family doing everything. So now I have a support system that I trust. Like, we have that balance. Everybody, how do you balance me and my Because I have a family. Right. And that's my whole mission, family first. Nothing comes before it. And I'll die. F- I'll die for my family. Now let's have some uh, R and B vocal talk, cause you know, okay. I, you know, I like some real R and B vocalists. Yeah. You know, I'll be, I'll be into that. Yeah. Um, how you feel about R and B and the females that's out here singing on this microphone right now? Everybody, like for real, is making its way back to the pure essence of. So you into K Michelle? Yeah. Thumbs up that, on that K-Michelle. whole nineties thing yeah. is never gonna come back. But with bits and pieces, we can grasp from it, and people who grew up in it and around it. Let's let's bring them back to the forefront. And how you feel about the Janae Eichos and Tanache's? The, the I, I've known Janae and I've seen her for years. I don't know who Tanache is. She got the little she got a little single, little I've dancer girl. Song. Yeah, yeah, two on two or whatever. On. It was with Schoolboy Q. I thought that was Cassie at first. Yeah, no, nah, that's that's so uh, she has like that vibe. I don't yeah. even know what she looks like, and people are gonna say that she that's in real life. But Jan- Janae Eiko, I just saw her the other week. Um, she was performing with Ty Dolla Sign, yep. like who's a real good friend mm-hmm. of mine, like. I have history with people like I've known them for years so I'm glad to finally see her at the forefront she's a great performer she performed she remixed Keep Your Head mm-hmm. Up by Tupac mm-hmm. and kills it with no shoes I said you better work mother <laughs> Fantasia been kicking her shoes off for years but she takes us off and everybody's everybody's good with it everybody's good who with else it. you watching out here on these vocalists because I know you're very particular yeah I'm very particular Um, who else is out I really I honestly I'm not gonna lie I'm into Jeezy right now oh well and Young Thugger of course okay. you are and Rich Homie of Quan I'm hip hop of course you so, are <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Meek Mill, I'm um, free Meek Mill. Who? <laughs> Fat G's. You like, like Seven Seven Streeter? Yeah, okay. I really like her. Seven Street is dope. She's, dope. she's okay. a dope songwriter. Um, I thought Esther Dean was gonna come out with a project because she's a dope songwriter, Amazing dope vocalist. Songwriter. But it's just like a lot of people, for real though. People just, I don't even want to be an artist. Let me just write these songs and just live off this this cake. I, I've always wanted under or wondered and tried to understand why people who have the ability to write melody, write song, song and structure, sing. arrange and sing have to be the artist and want to be out front right did you yeah. did you struggle with that ever where it was at, like at you had first, all the behind the scenes money and abilities yeah but you still wanted to be out in front because it's just like when you write for someone you know i always say i wish i could sing i wish they would sing it how i felt it mm. and a lot of people they don't 
realize you really have to go into your zone. So when you just standing there singing something and you in one place, just like, are you serious? But if that's how they feel, when they are, when you in that moment, it's just like, there's no way I can just stand in one place and sing any song, even Superwoman, I be turned. Like to this day, as soon as people hit it, they just lose their mind. So it's just like, yo, like that's why for the majority of the time now i just sing everything i write i don't sell songs anymore because really? the delivery my references are killing some people's actual True. vocals and then when i remake um people's songs when you and by it. the way audience when she says references that means the vocal she puts on the song that yeah, she wrote demo. for so the demo for someone else to sing it yeah a lot of times uh, a lot of songs wouldn't get placed on mine because it was like you're They're referencing afraid. too good and I'm just like yo like tell them don't but people get so attached to the references like oh come on so it's even to the point I don't even do my own backgrounds anymore I have a background because I wanted they was like like it sounds too singy you just doing too much and I'm like are you serious like that's how I grew up doing all your own backgrounds mm -hmm. each time don't fly no vocals now it's just like less is more and such is life there it is Lil Mo ladies and gentlemen give it up for her. Mom. Get the book. Yeah. All right. Get the album. The album title one more time. The Scarlet Letter. All right. The and you guys going to give us the single. Yep. And the book's Taming Lil Mo. Y'all could cop that. Yep. Is your real last name Loving? Yeah. I didn't know Cynthia that. Loving. I yep. Know that. Yep. That's my. That's. That's dope. <laughs> Beans, <laughs> Beans just got out. And he was like, he called me Scent. So, yeah, like. It's a lot of good things coming about. Just pay attention for the next couple of weeks because I can't really spill it yet. But, man, when I say the doors that are being opened in my life, like, wow. like Hard work pays off. Being positive really pays off. And you might be 75 years old when it start paying. But, God damn it, I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> no more, y'all. Thank you, man. Thank you.